What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast covering your favorite team in the Bay Area. We're back. We're covering the baby sharks, which I think a baby shark is called a pup. I don't know. It's been like six years of covering this team, and I still haven't figured it out. Uh, we did the CUDA forwards last week. Uh, we've done the 2020 draft class, the 2021 draft class. We're going to move on to the defensemen and the goalies for the Barracuda, talk about their season, where we see them going next year, uh, and just give a brief overview of what happened with them. Pretty straightforward. Uh, we've done this a lot now. And then we'll be out of prospect reviews or minor people reviews uh minors people reviews um maybe we'll do the 2019 draft class who knows who could say who could possibly most say? of them are on the cuda right now so most of them are on the cuda which is why we're not going to do it uh yes. we are going to go back into coming up we have another draft profile for you tomorrow uh we'll keep turning those babies out uh we've got a big board coming on the way always covering the news and the notes that happen uh, and we'll keep your draft coverage going further so let's get into it Your Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Kyle Demetrius. Back with me, as always, is co-host J.D., the uh i don't know <laughs> the millhouse divided to my bart in the dark <laughs> actually i was gonna say the ketchup to my cats up <laughs> you ever had cats up you're from the south uh it's just ketchup no it's not it can't be why is it called cats up then they just named it differently what is cats up what is cats up what is the difference between cats up and ketchup you can actually call the substance by either name, as there's no difference between kid. Okay, you win this round. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you learned Restart something the podcast. I can, I can admit when I'm wrong. I was wrong. Well, also, I just, I'm not from the South. I don't have a South. My South is like Windsor. Uh, You're in the South, me. I guess. Uh, I think uh, Vancouver's pretty South. Uh, well, I'm pretty close to the border. I'm like 30 minutes from the border. Yeah. Um, so I'm getting, unless you go to like Ontario or Vancouver Island, not getting much souther, southern, more southern. I, can southern speak, I speak man. words. I speak words that are good. Um, These fail cats up. That's impossible. <laughs> that's impossible. <laughs> I, what's a battle? That child just say what's a battle? Uh, no, he said what's a rattle? Are you sure? Yeah. Uh, there's. Uh, he's got a cold. What? Yeah. And the cold makes you sound ours as bees. Yes. Super Nintendo Chalmers. <laughs> oh, he's typing in cat on the cat. computer. It's like, uh, oh, this baby will rest on you. <laughs> Poor Gil. <laughs> oh, Gil. Gil is Gil. Is, Gil mm -hmm. Gil's got some hardships going out there. Uh, a, a really funny, uh, really minor character that I find really funny is Disco Stew. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, your fish are dead. I know. I know. I, can't I just out. can't get him out. <laughs> Disco is Disco's up 200% year ending 1978. And if these trends continue, hey. Disco Stu does. <laughs> Disco Stu, you should get this jacket. <laughs> it's all Disco Stud, but he didn't run out. He ran out of room for the D. <laughs> Disco Ugh. Stu doesn't advertise. Oh, no. Disco Stu. Anyway. Let's, you know who uh, doesn't run out of D? The Barracuda. Actually, let's, they do. They yeah, literally did. All, they, <laughs> they did. had to trade me potato because <laughs> they physically ran out of D. We're going to go in alpha order. Um, I haven't actually looked at the roster since the season ended, so there's bound to be some surprises. Uh, again, as of last time, if they spent most of their time on the uh, Sharks, we're not going to cover them. Like, I don't think Ryan Merkley's in here, right? Ryan Merkley's not in here. Um, um, so guys like that uh, who spent most of their time with the Sharks uh, yeah. or we covered else, like um, Gannon LaRock will not be in here. Uh, we covered him, covered him on the yep. 2021 draft. So uh, primarily Cuda guys, and we'll get into it. So let's go with the B. Uh, I'm assuming Potato might be first, actually. Uh, Potato is first. So let me go. Uh... Nice. He is an old, old AHL player. He's like 31 or something like that. Yeah. So uh, Anthony Stat. Potato, <laughs> yeah, yeah. in his 14 games with the Barracuda, um, he had two goals, zero assists, 0.14 points. 
per per game. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, also, if you're not watching, uh, if you want to watch on YouTube, JD made graphics. Uh, I would like to point out that JD did not care to find a sharks or a barracuda. Anthony, there Mateno. wasn't any. That <laughs> He's was, using a Rangers. Picture. There wasn't any. I looked. I looked. <laughs> I spent a lot of time looking. Uh, yeah, he's not the only one actually. That there's another one. So sick. Another Rangers play. Uh, uh, not Rangers, but another one. I think we can safely, uh, in the time, in, in in the essence of time, I think we can move on. He's not going to be with the Sharks next year. They literally just needed a human. Yes. So we will move forward. Fairly well, Tony. Oh, yes, we yeah, are we're into sorry. it. Hell yeah, yes. Nick. Uh, Chichek. So he had 53 games played, five goals, 20 assists for 8.47 points per game. Uh, earned himself a uh, contract from the Sharks this season after just signing with the Barracuda last year. Uh, yeah, I mean he, they really like his where he's his development's going. Um, you know, he was signed out of I believe he was a Winter Hawk um, back in the day. So um, they like where you know the WHL. So you know they signed kind of took a, a risk on him. Um, but they like the way his development is going, and we've already made the bold proclamation that he's going to be on the Sharks next year because that's how things work for some reason. So, uh, yeah, he's from Winnipeg, but he's half Turkish, half Canadian, which is sick. But he's like a big guy, 6'3, 201. He's already 21. Uh, he actually turns 22 in like four days after this airs. Um, yeah, I, like you said, the Middleton Kinesia of uh, Ferraro. This yeah. is our guy. This is our guy. So, yeah, I mean, and like he did, wasn't much of a scorer in the WHL. I mean, his last year that was cut short by COVID, or he was in the in the COVID weird year. He played 24 games, had 21 points there. But like all the other ones, you know, he's like 14 points in 63 games, 13 points in 44 games for the Winter Hawks. Um, I think to, he's going to be more of the Ferraro Kinesia of Middleton. Yeah, not, not a not, lot of points, solid, steady defense. Yes, defense, defense. Yeah, and he's he's a big guy, so and you know how coaches love him, a big boy. So, uh, who among us? Yes. Ah, oh, Santeri. Santeri Hadika, who, if you don't know where he's at, you should. When Santeri Hadika is not on the ice, you should always be asking, "Where's Hadika?" Um, first year in the pros this year. Um, I think we might have little bit too much on him hoping that he would kind of uh, make the jump from the sharks especially being a six round pick in the 2019 season but um this year with the the cuda he played 41 games three point three goals 12 assists um this year so and then for 0.29 points per game in 41 games did have um nine games for the sharks we also had two assists in that time too but um you know, I, I think for him, it's just, you know, let him keep developing. I think uh, he's going to have an opportunity next year to kind of continue to play big minutes on the CUDA um, and continue to develop. And hopefully he can, you know, find himself uh, in, to be the fifth year in a row. Uh, the Hadaka will be uh, part of the Mario Ferraro <laughs> development plan. Yeah, the 2023 2024 season where he comes out of nowhere and, and makes the team. So. I think, I think with Hadika, the thing is that he played in Liga for three years, I think. Um, so he's playing with men, and, and there's obviously that maturity to his game. Mm -hmm. But like you said, there's the defense on the Cuda have an advantage because the 2020 class has no defenseman in it. So everybody they bring in is before words. So there's much more doggy <laughs> dog world out there. Whereas the defenseman, if you're Hataka, first first pairing guy um, is, is what you're hoping for, and he can lead. Um, the Cuda defense is, is what you would want from a guy like Hataka. Um, yeah, he was running the leads. running the power play last year, stuff mm -hmm. like that. So that, that's well, lots of big things. He's only um, he's he only just, uh, he's 21. twenty-one. He just turned twenty-one. Yeah, so he's not turning twenty-two until the end of the season, and, and until mid, twenty. He's not turning twenty-two until next uh, middle of next season. So yeah, and it, with a guy like that, I think yeah, soaking up those those big minutes in the Cuda this year. You know, I think losing Megna. Um, kind of gave him a big opportunity, you know, and, and yeah, he just needs to kind of continue to take advantage of that. So, and I think also having real forwards on the Barracuda next year is going to do a lot for the Barracuda defense and goalies as we, uh, especially when we get to the goalies and you, we look at some of those numbers, but yeah, actually having real talent on the forwards is going to take a lot of pressure off the defenders and the goalies. So they're not having to play perfect all the time. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He'll be on the Cuda playing yeah. big minutes. Yep. So perfect for him. 
right, guys, before we uh, finish up talking about the Cuda defenseman and get into the goalies, uh, we want to take a quick break and talk to you guys about our friends over at Built Bar. Uh, you guys know about Built Bar by now, and they have something new and special, the Brownie Batter Puffs. If you like brownies, and how could you not like brownies, that's where you want to check out the Brownie Batter Puffs. Uh, they're a new creation, and this one's better than ever, Brownie Batter Puffs. The puff it takes protein bars to a whole new level, and they're available right now on Built.com. If you haven't tried the Built Puffs yet, you don't know what you're missing out on. Um, puffs are a chocolate-covered marshmallow protein bar. That's right, delicious flavored marshmallow covered in 100% real chocolate with 140 calories, 17 grams of protein, and only 7 grams of sugar. The brownie batter puffs are the perfect pick-me-up for any day, and all the Built Puffs are covered in 100% real chocolate. That means... That was built, you can eat healthy and actually enjoy what you're doing. And they've made these puffs with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. So head over to built.com, get your brownie batter puff now. Use the promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off of your order. Again, use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. Patrick Hallway. He played 43 games, had four goals, eight assists, 0.28 points. Um, last season also was playing. Um, so he's a little bit older of a guy. He's been kind of bouncing between um, the CUDA and um, the ECHL. So uh, he played. Uh, so he's 25 already. He'll be 26 at the beginning of the season. Um, but he also played with the South Carolina Stingrays, who have actually been there before at that game. Huh, uh, really? Yeah. So um, 17 for the Stingrays, he played 17 games, had one goal, 12 assists, 13 points for them. Um, he also he's a call NCAA guy. So he's a kind of a depth defense. I think. You know, when they ran out of bodies, he kind of got more play time. So I'm not, don't have high hopes for him type of thing. So, yeah, I, I doubt he will. We be, lost Kyle's video I, too. I feel, I feel like uh, it'll be back in a second. Just give me, yeah. give me, give me one, one second here. Just let me, let me relax. I'm putting on, I'm actually putting on a Patrick Holloway jersey. Oh, um, good. Yeah, you're the only one. <laughs> uh, even Mrs. Holloway doesn't have one. Um, no, uh, I. I a guy who feels who feels the need. Also, he wears ninety seven, which is sick. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I he can compete for a bottom pair. Compared. Yeah, he's a probably yeah he's an ECLH guy. And then if if they need if they get hit by injuries or whatever, like he gets called out type of guy. So yeah, yeah, whatever. to the Cuda, not the Sharks. Not to the Cuda. Yeah, uh, if he's on, he's yeah he's not actually on the Sharks. Like he'd have to get earned a contract from the Sharks anyway. So next, or Timmy Kanaizev. 60 games played, seven goals, 21 assists. Actually led the Sharks in uh, defensemen in games played in points. Um, had 0.47 points per game. Um, exactly probably what you want from him this year. Yep. So uh, he was running the power play, power play as well. Also going to be soaking up big minutes for the Cuda next year. Um, you know, and I think he's he's developing, you know, he's doing his thing and developing the way you're expecting him um, to. He did play, get some games with the Sharks as well um, this season, especially when they were. He got one. One game. So, uh, <laughs> but one game is better than none. So, yeah, he's he, he scored. He scored really well in juniors. Like he 34 and 55, 43 and 51, and then 18 yep. and 14. Um, yeah, he's again. He's 21. He's not going to be 22 till mid next season as well. So, um, yeah, it like we were talking about with Hadika, where they're both kind of on the same path, where it's just going to continue to soak up minutes and 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 learn and wait for your your chance to to jump up to the Sharks. So yeah, and with Kinyev, um obviously more of an offensive mind, uh, an offensive tilt to his game. So um, hoping to be that next guy that can come in and, and put up points in the NHL as a second pair guy. Probably is is what you're hoping for. Uh, mm-hmm. Best case scenario, run the power play or a power play two guy. Um, yeah, keep it going, Artemi. There's some interesting guys down here in the uh, in the Pakuda D system where they're not going to be stars or getting anywhere close to that, but like but if solid getting... second pair guy or solid third pair guy, guy that can yep. that can give you a few years and then you find another one. Like, yep. hey, they're, they're taking swings. 
Yeah, and especially with some of these guys where it's they're not just, you know, especially Hadika and, and, and Kanaz or Kanijov where it's uh, you know Kanizev, um, where they can do a little bit more than just like play defense. You know, they can run your power play, they can mm-hmm. provide you a little bit more offense, they can transition the puck out of the zone where so you're not just like you play defense and that's it type of thing. So speaking um, of no offense, I know this is a but an amazing name, Montana Onyabuchi. Uh, 46 games played, one goal, six assists, point, uh, one, five points per game. Not an offensive guy, no. <laughs> to say the least. But uh, he, yeah, he it was a tryout, um, got a, you know, a, a contract with Akuda um, that last season. So, you know, good for him. He, he bounced between, he played a couple games with the Solar Bears as well. He played eight games, had three assists in that time. Uh, but another one of those guys where they, you know, he got signed out of uh, the WHL, you know, um, kind of like Nick Chichek's and stuff where gave him a shot and see what he does. Um, he did have 137 penalty minutes last year on the CUDA. So Jeez. Uh, good, good for him. Definitely big boy gets big penalty minutes. Big boy gets big penalty minutes. Um, also has that nice, uh, you know, NFL heritage where his, uh, I think his uncle or something was, was played in the NFL. So he's also 6'3", 220. He's a he's, a, he's like he's like Nick Chichak. Awesome. They have a, yeah. they have a type. So yeah, he's t- just turned twenty two earlier this year. So yeah, I mean he's your defensive defenseman type of guy. So he's gonna rack up. He'll, he'll be back on the CUDA next year. Um, see what you can get out of this guy. Yeah. He was a free signing off the street. So see yeah, him around, bottom, give him some minutes. Yeah, I think he's a he's a bottom six guy for the for the CUDA. So and probably nothing more. But hey. You need those guys in the age also. Um, next is uh, Brinson Pashnuk. Um, oh God, you picked that photo. He played in the he played in the Sharks last year. So this year he missed a lot. He missed most of the season uh, with Silic disease. So uh, kind of a lost season for him. Um, so he only got nine games in. Had one goal and then 0.11 points per game. So, you know, I mean, the Sharks were pretty high when they signed him out of Arizona State. So much so that they signed his brother to help <laughs> convince uh, to get him to come to the Sharks. So, um, I'm willing to chalk this season up. I mean, he he did get games with the the Sharks two years ago when they were um, he played uh, four Cooper. games in yeah 22 2020 to 2021. Played four yeah, games so, at the end of the season. Yeah, he's you know defensive defenseman type of guy. And well, he's that's the thing though. He's not. Because when you look at his career at Arizona State University, he did score pretty well, yeah. 26, 34, 30, and 35, 37, and 36. That that should translate to points, and he just hasn't done it. Because even last year, he had eight points in 32 games. That's not, yeah. that's not translating for what you thought he was going to do. And he's yeah, all, remember, think, he's turning 25 in November. So he's, he's like, turning 25. He's so, he's so I think this is kind of his, this upcoming year is going to be his last. I think they're willing to give him a, a, mm-hmm. a pass, especially with something that he couldn't you know, control. It's not like he, uh, you know, like broke something or, you know, something like that where, you know, I, I think, you know, with your eating stuff and you're trying to figure out your diet and stuff like that, I think that can take a while for your, your, for your body to kind of go through and kind of figure out, you know, figuring that out and what you can and can't eat and stuff like that. So, um, you know, hopefully he comes in and hits the ground running this season and can kind of prove that he, he belongs. So, yeah. I agree, though. This is probably the season's put up or shut up at this point. Yeah, this is, this is probably it for for him. He does have, yeah, because actually he's uh he is an RFA right now. So if they wanted, I I wouldn't be I would be shocked if they didn't bring him back, especially after last season. But yeah, give him a one year deal. See, like, hey, what, let's see what you can do. Yep, type of thing. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, so that's it. For but I wouldn't defense. be shocked if he was just gone. Yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if he's gone. But yeah, like I said, I I, I think. You you kind of give him a give him a pass for last season. So, um, but yeah, that's it for the defense. But there's some other guys who I didn't include because they're not with the team or they played like two games or something like that. So, um, yeah, the defense needs definitely definitely needs some help. Infusion of D. <laughs> infusion of of D. Don't we all need an infusion of D? <laughs> all right, goalies. Zachary Emond. I know. This uh, one. Was that? I know this one. Yeah. 12 games played, uh, 0.867 save percentage, 4.4.8 <sighs> goals against average, uh, zero. The, spoiler alert, they're all wolf. Um, <laughs> 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 all right. Oh, God. 
So yeah, he also played. He's been kind of bouncing between the uh, the Solar Bears and and the Cuda um, last year. He also, um, after playing in the KMJHL for a couple of years, um, also so the Solar Bears this year he had 13 games, three six seven eight uh, goals against average and an eight seventy nine save percentage. I uh, went six four and one. So, but yeah, I'm I'm. Well, the, the know, thing here, the thing here is that uh, goalies take are weird, and well, you never yeah, know. Yeah, but also he got drafted in 2018, so he he puts up uh, and he plays 24 games, has an 8.97 save percentage um, for with Maroon Noranda and the QMJHL. Okay, then he gets drafted. And goalies take a while. He follows that up in 2018-19 with a 9.32 save percentage, 1.73 goals against average in 27 games. Um, only played one playoff game and led in like. A Did you see that? Goals. I was gonna say He's got a sixteen point six seven goals against average and a two fifty save percentage in one game. That's like must have got, got lit up. Yeah, it's like a pitcher who gets like rocked the first day and is like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, but a nine thirty. He had seven shutouts that year too, a nine thirty two. And you think, okay, obviously he's probably not going to put up a nine thirty two every season. If he mm-hmm. does, it's amazing. But then he falls back to a nine oh eight in fifty three games. Now he's played the most games he's ever played. Yeah, um, he's played fifty three games. A nine oh eight three one six goals against average. You're like, okay. One shot out, 25, 23, and 24. You're like, you can deal with that. But then he goes down. And yeah. with 10 games in Rayoon, he puts up a, uh, an 886. And then he gets traded to St. John Sea Dogs and puts up an 863 in 13 games. And it's like, well, okay, maybe he rebounds in the playoffs. But in six playoff games, he puts up an 876. And you're like, okay, well, can't play in juniors anymore. Let's bring him to the CUDA. And this year, he puts up an 867 in 12 games. And he puts up an 879 in 13 ECHL games. So, like, He's trended down since he's been drafted, yeah. and I think that's a little concerning, considering he had that really good season right after he got drafted. I, I, it's got to be concerning, right? Yeah, it's got to be concerning, and I think he's going to be fighting for his life to try to make the coup next year. Um, but I would expect him to probably start, uh, especially if you have Sachenko and you have Straussman. Like, I think he's going to be probably uh, starting the season on the ECHL, and then if he does well maybe get called gets called up there yeah, yeah i think him and stress man obviously are going to battle it out for that i think stress man's gonna be the starter i think they signed him to be the guy but it really yeah could, could be. could be i mean just incumbent you got to beat the man to be the man right yeah so well, stress man has to be when, better than when you look at these guys well, yeah, <laughs> yeah but at the same time like they yeah. know sachenko and amon so you've you got to like yeah you got to show a little something but um, I mean, Strassman had a really good season in the yeah. SHL. Like that's that's a that's a tough league and, and stuff. So, um, but yeah, next, Sam Harvey, oh, straight out of Canadian uh, university. Yeah, so he played uh, seven games. <laughs> this is hilarious to me: eight seventy six save percentage, three sixty two goals against, but had two shutouts. So when he was on, he was on. <laughs> when he wasn't. <laughs> I guess it did not go very that's, well. That's rough. Uh, he went two and five. Both his wins were shutouts. Yep. So, yeah. Uh, when he's on, he's on. Uh, he played 34 games for the uh, Fort Wayne Comets um, in the ECHL. Um, 277 goals against average, 916 save percentage with three shutouts. So, that's what you like to see. Uh, played well in the, in the playoffs as well. Had uh, seven games played, 246 goals against, 913 save percentage. So, so um, with, with him too, he was lights out in uh, the QMJHL. He played in Rayu Noranda right before uh, Amon, and he put up an 889 and then a 900 and then a 930 uh, in the same year that uh, um, Amon got drafted. He, Amon was the backup to Harvey. And then the next year, uh, he put up a 926. <laughs> Uh, when when Amon had that crazy year, and then um, Harvey was actually the starter in the playoffs, he put up a nine twenty four with a one point nine seven in twenty games in the playoffs. Like he was really good in the queue, um, and then went to U Sports uh, University of New Brunswick and had a really good season, put up a nine forty six in the playoffs. Um, I think there might be a little something there, and then yeah, yeah he, he fell apart with the Barracuda this year. Yeah, but again, yeah, yeah. there's nothing in front. Like the the numbers are going to be bad because there's. Literally nothing in front of the Cuda, you know. It, so it's funny that he's just straight up was better than Zach Amond on the same team. <laughs> so yep, yep, yep. Yeah, so he's he's got something cooking, I think. We he might be a dark horse. Mm-hmm. So um uh, the god Chinko, Zachary saw Chinko. Way uh, better NHL player. Than NHL yeah. player. <laughs> <laughs> Which yeah, wow. Imagine having actual real de- I know the Sharks defense core is uh 
not the greatest, but actually does have real talent in front of him. Um, so in 14 games with the CUDA, 877 save percentage, 4.03 goals against average, zero shutouts. Um, also, plays some games with the Sharks. So he, he was in seven games with the Sharks. 335 goals against average, and then uh, 901 save percentage. And did earn Martin a win. Jones, eat your heart out. Yeah, in your face, Marty. Um, before that, you know, last year with the, the Barracuda in five games, he had a 259 save or goals against average and a 914 save percentage. Uh, with Allen Americans in the ECHL, 255 goals against and a 926 save percentage in seven games. Uh, the 1920 season. Um, with the Barracuda, which he played really well. He had 13 games, two 87 goals against in a 9-11 with one yeah. shutout. He and also then, a guy that came out of U Sports in Canada, <laughs> yeah, University so. of Alberta. I, 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 I'm hesitant to say that they're all not very good when they're all bad, but some of them had really good. Like I think Amon is a little different because he's been yeah. trending down. But with Harvey and Sachenko, you see, you kind of see like, that there was like uh, they they were always there's always something there. Yeah. Um, and they were putting up numbers that you would want to see. And then this year was just like, whoa. Um, so I, I have all the time in the world for Sachenko and yep. um, Harvey. I think Amon might be the odd man out, like you said. Yeah. And so he turns 25 at the end of this year. So in the middle of the, of the, the season. So um, he is also, I believe, yeah, he's also an RFA. So um, I wouldn't be shocked if they brought him back. And I think it's going to be a, a man Sachenko uh, duo in the CUDA. Um, and then Harvey Amon in the ECHL. Harvey Amon in the ECHL. And then you have uh, Goudreau and, um, Krona. and Magnus Krona kind of is in the pipeline waiting. So. And then last but not least, Alex Salock. <laughs> oh, Alex Salock got some run at the yeah. He definitely got some run at the end of the season with the Cuda. Um, you know, he was starting a ton of the games during their 15 game losing streak. But uh, that's not a good. That's an indictment. <laughs> yeah, 12 games played, 872 save percentage, 404, one shutout. Good for you having your moment back in the sun um, with the the Cuda. He also did play um, some games with the Bakersfield Condors. Um, he had five games played there, 381 uh, uh, goals against average, and then a 862 save percentage. Um, played one game with the Sharks, got absolutely lit up, 781 goals against average, 786 save percentage in that game. That was the 8 uh Preds game uh, where the whole Sharks team just got absolutely lit up. So um, he was a desperate breaking in case of an emergency trade. Like he was literally in the building when they traded for him. So that way, cause they, they were just so with Hill being hurt and something, I forget something was wrong, but that was when Reimer got hurt too. Like they were just literally out of options. So um, good for you, Alex. They like coming back from everything you did to kind of, you know, make it back. You got back in the NHL, you played your one game, you made it back, but uh, um, yeah, he should not be back on the He won't be. No, he so. will not. He will not be signed. They have they have the four goalies. Yeah, they have plenty of goalies. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think the big takeaway is we were kind of talking about where it's I think having some actual talent in front of them is going to do the defense core and, and, and the, the goalies um, a lot of good. And I wouldn't be surprised to see, you know, Strauss or I see like Sachenko's numbers bounce back and, and Strauss man, you know perform pretty well um some other goalies let's see if you can name other goalies who played for the um there's two other goalies who i did not mention the played for the sharks or played, or for, the played the for the barracuda yeah do i do i know who they are you should uh oh uh is alexei melnichuk one of them yes so he played 31 games um i didn't include him because he's no longer a sharks prospect he got traded to the uh lightning played 31 games 392 goals against average and a 867 save percentage with zero shutouts. And um, I think he struggled adjusting to North American ice. And yeah. I, so, and I think with Strauss, man, I mean, I know they traded him before, man, but like, I think Sachenko was much better than him. And the, yeah, he just, yeah. he looked, he looked lost. So was the, was the other one, Aiden Hill? The other one was Aiden Hill. <laughs> played one game. Um, it was, I think it was a, uh, kind of a rehab stuff. game so uh three goals allowed yeah 306 save percentage um nine seven or 306 goals against average and 917 save percentage so the only kuda goalie with a above 900 save percentage last year so uh yeah 
they uh, they were a hot mess back there. But so. Well, they lost 15 games in a row to close. They did lose a lot of games, and they, uh, you know, now they've got they cleaned house and stuff. So, really quick, I mean, your thought, your like five minute thoughts on on John McCarthy and you know, so like just Roy Sommer leaving and John McCarthy because yeah, you weren't for Friday's episode. So, yeah, I think I think obviously um when you look at Roy Sommer's record, it wasn't great, and he's the winningest and losingest coach. <laughs> yes. Um, when you play the most amount of game, when you coach the most yeah, amount of game. I've never been a super big fan. People ha- have talked to that he's put like 150 people in the NHL or something like that. I, I think he's also coached and, for 25 years. So yeah. Yeah. I think when you go and look at it, um, he's a compiler. Probably, uh, <laughs> yeah. There's probably like of those 150, like you'd have to break it down. Mm-hmm. A lot of the superstars don't really play in, in the, in, in the, AHL, but like if you're going to count Timo, like Timo was always making it back to the NHL. You know what I mean? Logan Couture uh, was always going to play in the NHL. Like, yeah. yeah. So like uh, Joe Pavelski though was probably really helped. So I, mm. I think I think there's lots of stuff. Barkley Goodrow, but, like your guys like that, like Barkley Goodrow. Yeah, really. but I think at the same time, coaching one team and one organization for 31 years is probably not ideal. Uh, just from a development standpoint a tactics it, it, it's hard you become part of the paperwork the wallpaper uh furniture part of the furniture that's what mm-hmm. i'm saying is i i just think I, I think there was a time six seven years ago when it's probably time to move on and just and just refresh your system um and give it especially because we saw lots of different coat like assistants like they let go of bono and chase on too like one of them moved to back to scouting and one of them is gone yeah, uh, um, yeah. Bones has went back to scouting, and they haven't. And said Chase where is gone. Chase is working for the CAA for Pat Brisson. Yeah, yeah, and their goalie so, coach is gone. Like, yeah, it's full clean out. So, yeah. So I think I think it was beyond time for that. And I think uh, John McCarthy's only what, like thirty six or something like that. He's thirty five. He's younger than 30, me. 30, 35. <laughs> 35, But he he's been with the organization. He's a player. I, I have better I think, hair though. I was gonna say. I think, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I think it's an interesting hire. Um, obviously, he was kind of like that player coach for the last couple of years, and I, I think it's I think it's a good hire. It's interesting, even if it's only for a couple of years. Um, I, I think it was time to refresh the Barracuda coaching yeah. system, and obviously, people are gonna be like, eh, a good AHL coach doesn't care about the record and Calder wins and stuff like that. And it's like, well, winning breeds winning. I understand. Winning, baby. I understand <laughs> yeah, I understand that, but at the same time, you kind of gotta win. Like losing 15 straight games to close the season is tough. It's a yeah. tough look. And um, I mean, I talked to to Doug Wilson, and he said he was they were pissed about that. And it's like, you know, and, and he said, you know, too, like, yeah, you know, he wasn't Roy Somers wasn't pe- dealt the, the greatest hand. Um, but yeah, at some point, sometimes you got to make chicken shit out of, or chicken salad out of chicken shit. You just got to do it. So yeah. I think he did a lot of good stuff, and obviously, because he got all those wins and stuff like that, and there's players that came through. But I think it was it it was past yeah. due to to clean house and and get a refresh uh, yep. on, on the coaching staff. So. Yeah, I think uh, right person at the right time for the right job. And I think John McCarthy. I'm really excited for his, his development. You know, he's that's what he wants to be about development, development, development. And I think with the the, the pieces you have coming in, that's, that's they they're going to need something. They 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 can't they can't. They can't miss on the, these big draft classes. It will set the franchise back lots of time. But yep. if you want to talk to us on the internet, you can do that. Locked on Sharks at Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, email, Spotify, Apple, Amazon. JD, though, is at my fry hole. Kyle, it's at Kyle Demetrius. Again, we've passed our 800 subscriptions. So go. Uh, we have a video on our YouTube channel. It tells you how you can win a Martin Jones uh, bobblehead in the 16 17 season the good times uh bobblehead will now though guarantee you one william eklund draft pick um in the next year so that's good right <laughs> uh, but yeah thank you guys for making us your first sharks listen uh go check out the locked on nhl channel um especially with the playoffs coming you know going through um i can't believe what happened in the calgary flames game i can't believe it's not butter <laughs> Yeah, um, the Battle of Alberta has been banging. It's by the been way. insane. Yes, it has been absolutely insane. Uh, please, please, the more Vander Kane uh, chirps, the better. I love every one of them. Inject each one of them into my veins. Uh, they're amazing. I made through money on the ice tonight. <laughs> the, I saw. Yeah, we're, we're, yeah, we're we're recording this Saturday night, but uh, yeah, it, throwing the money at him. Uh, 
every he deserves every one of them. It's great. Um, or go check out one of the other amazing shows on the Locked On Network, such as Locked On Dolphins. Kyle Krabs host that one. Bye, friends. Fish. Fish. Big fish. <laughs>